Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. And this will be part 332. Praise the Lord. We're continuing with our lesson titled Prototokus Advent, which will be part 2. We said between the time of the beginning of sorrows and the rapture, or the tribulation period, actually, the Lord would manifest himself three separate times. We talked about the first two times. The first time would be a judgment. The second time would be the gathering. And the third time would be the rapture. Now, Scripture indicates with the coming of the Lord the third time will come the adoption of the prototokos into the fullness of sonship, completing the Father's primary plan. Turn to Galatians, the fourth chapter, verse four to five. Galatians four, four to five. Mm -hmm. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. That was the first advent, the coming of the Lord. To redeem them which were under the law, the human race, that we, the prototokos, might receive the adoption of sons. So the coming of the Lord basically was a twofold purpose. One, to free the human race from the bondage of Satan and to enable the prototokos to proceed to qualify for the fullness of sonship mm. through the adoption. Now, Scripture indicates the adoption will confer three classes or families in the Prototokos Church. The first distinct class will be the, those that we call the elders. The second will be those we call the priests, which are the angels. And the third will be the bride. So within a Prototokos group, assembly, you're going to have three classes. Three families within the overall family. We want to take a look at the first group because that's probably all we'll have time for right now. The elder group. Just before you go into the elder group. Yes. So we understand that in the same way that the prototokos are those who make the rapture, those who make the bride are also only the prototokos. Yes. There's absolutely no other saint, born again saint, who can be part of the bride. Well, the bride is basically composed of those born again. You can be, you don't have to be a prototokos to be a bride. Okay, that's what I'm trying to nail down, all right. But each individual makes that distinction, that decision here in this life, on this earth. Mm. The bride becomes the bride in heaven, but the bride prepares for the bride position on earth. Right. Uh, the first prerequisite is commitment, mm. total commitment. Yes. <clears throat> Along with total commitment is, of course, total love for the Lord, fullness of love. Those are, that's a prerequisite for the bride. Whoever it is that applies himself for that uh, a particular state of life here on earth will make the bridegroom. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now it says, <clears throat> Scripture pictures the elder group as seated on thrones around the Father's throne and wearing crowns. 
turn, turn to Revelation, the fourth chapter, verse 4. John is taken into the heaven of heavens and he sees the panorama of events that are taking place around the throne and he sees the participants starting with the Father. Verse 4, around about the throne, the Father's throne, were four and twenty seats. The word seats there in the Greek is thronos, so it's referring to thrones. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Now, we want to take a look a little bit at the description of the elders. The crowns. The word crown there comes from a Greek term, Stephanos. And the two words that a translated crown. One is Stephanos, the other is diadem. diadem. Mm. Now Stephanos is rendered as a woven encirclement worn over the head that signifies victory. It is a a badge, if you will, connoting that the individual is victorious, has been victorious, has been an overcomer in this life, and therefore qualifies to rule with the Lord. What's the difference between Stephanos and Dida? Well, we'll go into that okay. a little, little right on. <clears throat> Turn to Revelation, second chapter, verse 26 to 27. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power or authority over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So there's a description of the individual who has been called from eternity, the prototokos, to achieve a certain position in the Father's kingdom, the one who qualifies to receive this Stephanos, his victor's crown, will be given authority over the nations okay. and the morning star glory okay. which is what's described by the elders as they are seen pictured around the throne now the morning star glory can also be um, described as an intensity of, of dunamis or dynamis is that correct? <laughs> well actually what it is it's a splendor, which connotes, it's, it sets that person apart, distinguishes him in a particular setting, a particular position. So isn't that Daniel 12, 3? Uh, no. Those who bring many to no. the Lord. No, those are like soul stars. winners and those are the wise. They have a greater glory. Well the soul winners are not the wise. I'm saying Daniel 12, 
three is talking about the soul group winners being and wives only. So the the soul winners are not elders. They can be elders. Okay. They can be. Okay. But it's distinguishing the individual who has this particular characteristic, wisdom. That's the highest characteristic right. you can pursue. Agreed. I was specifically talking about the, the soul. Winner. But the morning star glory that you're referring right. to is a different perspective. It's a splendor that is attributed to a specific group. The morning stars, the dawn stars, have a glory that sets them out. They're a family. Right. They are distinguished. You look at them, you see their glory, their splendor, their radiance. Sure. Identifies them as a particular group. The elder identifies them as a morning star because they are patterned after the bright and morning star. So it distinguishes them in the open apple of the sons of God. That that particular it gives you the, the 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 history of them. They've been created totally in the image of the Creator. In the same way that the priest class has the angels or the stars over the churches who are the, the highest. That separates them from the rest of the hierarchy of the priest class. Is the morning star glory that you're referring to for the elders a similar level of elder? Yes. So there are, el there are elders who do not have the morning star glory is what I'm getting to. Uh, well, that would be an individual that didn't make the rapture. Okay, right. We're talking about the prototype. Only those that, who make the rapture. Yeah, right. the, that they've qualified, they've gotcha. done what they were called to do. And it's at this point that the crown appears for the, for the elders. Right. Yes. Does the crown for the stars over the churches appear at the point of their elevation? Uh, it would appear at the point of their glorification. Gotcha, okay. Because they're so, stepping into the adoption position right. at that point. Right. What we're looking at here is the elder and the things that characterize him. He's set apart, he's distinguished, number one, <clears throat> by the fact that he's victorious, yes. the crown. Yes. Number two, he's got the morning star glory. Mm -hmm. Now this sets him over the morning stars right. because the morning stars are created. Okay. The elder steps in a position of having no beginning, no ending, right. but he's got the, the, the glory of those who have the image of the Creator. Since he has no beginning and no ending, mm -hmm. is, his, his, is his morning star glory greater you know, uh, for, for, from a visual perspective than that of the YHVH dawn stars? Yes. Right. You can distinguish. Is it significantly greater? Yes. Right. It's the difference between a person who has a servant's position and a person who has sonship position. Yeah, I see. So in, in eternity, you can pick it out gotcha. immediately. You can classify where everybody it stands in their relationship to the Creator, where their position is in relationship to the kingdom. Right. And what we find here is John is describing the vision that he sees of the elder group and uh, <clears throat> how they fit in to the calling of the Father. They're going to be the rulers over God's creation. Yes. Particularly over the nations. Now, <coughs> what we find is their history scripture teaches they are global in number they come from every region of the earth revelation the fifth chapter verse 8 to 10 When he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. They sung a new song, saying, 
<coughs> thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us, the elder group, to God, by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So they are a global group that's taken out of every corner of the human race. Every language, cultural group has a an elder representing it. Right. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Now the word on there comes from a Greek term epi, which actually means reign over the earth. The earth here basically isn't just referring to the planet, it's referring to the creation. Sure. All the physical attributes. So they give a testimony where they come from, what they have achieved, and what their destiny is. Now we find <coughs> scripture indicates their function in heaven. <coughs> They have a function in heaven which is not rulership. They don't rule until they come back to earth with the Lord. So they are participating in events in the heavens in a different way than ruling. The word nation is what I'm thinking about right now. Mm -hmm. Since we know that nation states no longer exist at this point, mm -hmm. what does the word nation originally mean before it's translated into the English? Oh, it's talking about uh, every aspect of the races of the creation. So you say race, yes. ethnicity, okay. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, I've got written in a note here, these people made the rapture and are now glorified. Yes. Okay. Yes. We're talking about a distinguishing group here that made the rapture and are glorified. What do they do? How are they positioned? What is their calling? Well, they're going to be rulers over God's creation. They have a distinguishing glory that sets them apart from every other group, but they still comprise the family of the Prototokos. In this, in this context, <clears throat> they will be performing a function in heaven before they return to earth to rule. What is that function? <clears throat> Their function is to minister to the new arrivals. They become musicians playing their harps, setting an atmosphere for those in heaven who for the most part are going to be martyred to come up and be ministered to. Note what it says in Revelation, the fifth chapter. Verse <coughs> 8. When you take in the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps mm -hmm. and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. So they perform a function in heaven. Number one, their harps add to the atmosphere of glory, peace, serenity that surrounds the Father's throne. Now we see an example of that. Turn to Revelation 14. Excuse me, just before you turn to Revelation. Mm -hmm. I just want to hone in on the, the, the golden vials full of odors just we're for a second. We're going to come back to that. Okay. Right, come back to okay. that. Okay. We're not going to miss it. Yeah, trust me, we're not going to miss it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Revelation 14, verse 1 to 2. Okay. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Sion, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So these are now just entered into the presence of the father. They've been raptured 
um, basically taken from the earth into the heaven of heavens. And I heard a voice from heaven. The word voice there actually means sound. Mm. <clears throat> I heard a sound from heaven as the sound of many waters and as the sound of a great thunder. And I heard the sound of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song, talking about the 144,000, before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. No man could learn that song but the 144 and 4,000 which were redeemed from the earth. So what happens is, as the elders are playing the harp, their harps, they set in motion a worship attitude which inspires the 144,000 to sing their testimony so in verse glorifying two, the Lord yeah so in verse 2 the voice from heaven and the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder mm. are not the voice of the harpers mm -mm. they are presume of the uh, pillar angels. Other well there are others that are surrounding the throne okay. which are not identified okay which are contributing to this to that, glorified uh, picture and that may or may not include the pillar angels okay yes but the focus here is, is on the, yes. the elders yes, the playing elders. their harps, creating this glorious, they're adding to this glorious atmosphere which motivates people to glorify God through their testimony. <clears throat> the Father does all things wisely. Amen. This would be a major function for the elders because you're going to have others come up that are modern. These 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 are, are modern. They're just taken from the earth. But you have other groups that are going to come up like the ones under the altar and all the rest of that. And they are going to <coughs> be ministered to. Matter of fact, turn to Revelation the 7th chapter. Should we understand that the ministering is a calming effect for those who have been martyred? It's an acclimating effect okay. from the dissonant death uh, experience that the person has had on earth to the glorious serenity that they're going to experience on heaven. It enables them to transition and acclimate to conditions in the heavens. So previously when we see that the, that the Father appears to be doing the acclimating, it's actually these elders who are doing that, right? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Revelation 7. Starting in verse 9. <clears throat> After this I beheld... Okay. After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory, and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. <coughs> One of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and which came there? Notice the elder yes. talks to John, to get John to understand what's taking place around him. Right. So he begins to explain who this group is. And then he goes on to say, <clears throat> verse, drop down to verse 15, Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. And they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them any more. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them into living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Okay. Part of this is going to be the elders playing their harps right. because these people come up from a tremendous experience. They have been killed. True. butchered, yeah. martyred in the most horrendous way. Yeah. And what that does to the soul is indescribable. Even though you're righteous, you still have memory of what you've experienced. 
And so what happens is the father who does all things wisely has set up this system in which the new arrivals can be integrated and acclimated to the harmonious conditions that exist around the throne. Sure. They make a transition sure. literally from hell to heaven gotcha. and become acclimated to peace, love, and joy. And one of the factors is the elders with their hearts. Sure. At the, the, the end of the acclimation, or the transition, I should say, once they are acclimated, mm -hmm. should we understand that the memory of that trauma that you've just described now disappears? Or do sure. they still remember it? No. Okay. No. It's gone. no, it's eradicated. Right. Now, go back to Revelation, the fifth chapter. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> We're going to address your other questions. Excellent. When you're taking the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them, so every one of them has a harp, and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. So they perform several functions here. Mm -hmm. What are the vials, and what is the function, and how does the elder, and how is he involved in this? Well, the scripture indicates the other function is to capture the prayers of the saints left behind or going through a literal hell on earth and give them to the priest angel to offer at God's altar. So they capture the prayers and they are custodians over the prayers and at a specific time before a judgment falls Turn to Revelation, the 8th chapter, verse 1 to 4. When he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. Now, this is a procedure into the tribulation period. Mm -hmm. There is a time in which the Father has determined the first of the judgments is now going to fall on the earth. Verse 2, And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Now in Revelation, the fifth chapter, you get the explanation. Where does the prayers come from? It comes from the elder who has been custodian of them, from the time that the saints on earth prayed and they ascended to heaven. He's held them. All the elders are holding vials full of prayers of saints mm. to be released at a specific time. So you would say they're the custodians of those prayers? Yes. It's their job to yes, preserve the prayers. Right. Until they're enacted upon. Yes. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Verse 4, And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, mm -hmm. ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. So, before the judgment falls, there is a ceremony that takes place at the altar before the Father, which includes this beautiful incense that is burnt at the altar which rises up before the Father, included in the incense are the prayers of the suffering saints on earth. Why is this taking place? Now you, excuse me, you just said before the judgment falls. You mean the tribulation judgment. Is that what you're yes. talking about? Okay. Yes. So yes. there's a short period of time in which, I guess there's a bit of respite. Uh, rapture's happened. This is going on. There's a short period of time and then it turns into the intense tribulation that I'm understanding. No, it is a long period of time because the rapture, between the rapture and the judgment, you got a generation of stuff happening. Okay. 
Okay. Reading of Revelation, you don't get that impression, but yes. Right. <laughs> Because they're in eternity, it looks like a short period of time where you, one event takes place in right. another. But it's a protracted period of time. That's why the elders have to hold on to the prayers. Now, I want to make sure I'm understanding you correctly. Okay. The, the generation you're referring to is from the rapture to the great tribulation or the rapture to the tribulation? No. The generation I'm referring to starts beginning of sorrows. Okay. To Okay. The end of the tribulation. I misunderstood. Period. I'm sorry. Yes, I see. And in that respect, <clears throat> the job of the elders is very important mm. because you got people dying all over, the, the, from beginning to end. Yes. You have the righteous. Yes. That are dying and suffering and praying to the Lord, but only at this particular point do you have judgment that's going to fall on the earth. Mm -hmm. Now. How does this all gel? Well, it has to do with the fact that the prayer of the saint being held by the elder is going to be that instrument that protects that saint when judgment falls on the earth. God acknowledges that individual and God will not pour his judgment out on a righteous saint. The judgment is going to hit the Luciferians and all the wicked of the earth, but the saints suffering saints are going to be protected the only ones that are going to harm them are the enemy the luciferians whenever god's judgment falls his people are always protected one way or either they're sealed or they're kept out of the way where the judgment is falling but god makes provision every single time for the righteous mm -hmm. this is a provision for them amen Notice what it goes on to say. Verse 5. The angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar, cast it into the earth, and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. So the smoke of the incense, which is the prayer of the saint, comes up before the Lord, is accepted by the Lord. And it's a signal, a seal that protects that individual saint from the judgment that's going to wipe out everything around him. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. In Revelation 12, we get a group who've been taken into the heavens and love their lives to the end no more. You know who I'm talking about. They give a testimony and pray. Is this a similar situation where the, the Lord hears the prayer and as a result of hearing that prayer understands that they are now fully committed in what they're doing and therefore carries on whatever he's going to do? Well, well, what they did was long before that. Okay. Now, I'm not talking about this period of time. I'm mm -hmm. just talking about the, 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 the conviction and the signal that you're referring to. Okay. As soon as a person commits, yes. as soon as he repents, yes. immediately he's forgiven. Okay. You're going to have a period of time that transcends that. Mm -hmm in which God is going to make provision for that individual. In this particular case, each case is unique. Okay. In this case, the, the, the saint missed the rapture. Right. He repents. He's forgiven. His life is not going to be preserved until a particular point. Right. That's the point I'm making. God has a plan for that saint. Mm -hmm. Since he's he has committed, remember what the scripture talks about in Revelation <clears throat> The uh, sixth chapter, souls under the altar are told to wait yes. until their fellow servants are killed as they right. were. Well, God has preserved them to a point in which they will not be martyred until a particular point occurs. Same is true for these. They're going to be preserved until a certain point. Then they're going to be martyred because the father wants them to make a, accomplish a certain particular thing that falls in his plan for this, the, those that didn't make the rapture they're going to have a place in his kingdom they're going to be doing certain things but they still got to qualify for that the qualification being the martyrdom yes, yes. <clears throat> so yes. he protects them until he's ready for them to be martyred sure they did the course. same thing with jesus they tried to kill jesus a number of times sure but Jesus was protecting right. this is not my time right. the same is true for these saints gotcha okay <clears throat> so then the answer is yes to the signal that you were talking about yes okay. verse 7 
uh, verse 6, And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, they were followed hail and fire mingled with blood. They were cast upon the earth. And the third part of trees was burnt up, and the, and the green grass was burnt up. So each judgment is aimed at a particular thing to make a particular accomplishment. And it's not going to fall indiscriminately. It's going to fall on the thing that is under judgment. The saint that is in that area is going to be protected because supernaturally the Father has acknowledged him worthy of protection. Gotcha. And that's why the custodianship of the prayer of that saint is so important. Yes. That's, that's the proof, if you wish. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Well, we're going to continue this Tuesday. We'll be adding, because we're just about through with the elders, and we're going to be adding uh, the priests, their function, and uh, how they fit into all of this.